can you explain um, what mental fatigue is and how it differs from physical fatigue? Yeah, I think this is really important to, I guess, set the scenes in terms of what we're actually talking about here. Um, and tough one to start because there's, I guess, a few differing like opinions or contributions towards this definition. But it's mental fatigue basically is defined as what we call a psychobiological state. So it has psychological and biological or physiological components um, induced by prolonged periods of demanding cognitive activity. Um, and that's basically something that requires, or some people like to add, that that requires sustained mental efficiency. So um, I guess like to break that down, it sounds a bit a bit vague. I think if you don't understand sort of the three key components. So it's basically simply doing or an individual engaging in something that they find cognitively demanding, um, whether mm -hmm. that be like actually in terms of like a cognitive domain that's being targeted or maybe it could also be emotionally demanding um, and influential in that way. Um, for a duration of time, that induces mental fatigue. And you mentioned uh, earlier a 16% drop off uh, in yo-yo performance. What's actually going on there? Like what um, from a physical point of view, where do you think um, athletes are being impacted from an athletic performance when they're in mental mental fatigue state? Yeah, so the biggest, I guess there's lots of proposed, um, I say lots of, there's a few key proposed mechanisms around mental fatigue. And I guess without getting uh, too super sciencey, but the, basically the rating of perceived exertion is, is the moderator or the thing that we think regulates most definitely how we then output physically. Um, mm -hmm. And that is likely um, to do with the idea of accumulation of adenosine um, in the brain and then that has a subsequent consequence basically on things like dopamine and motivation um, basically then your perception of effort and how you're going to perform in the task and that tends to be also sort of backed up by how we see it impact endurance tasks what are mm -hmm. some early signs I guess for athletes listening in where they can pick up and be aware of um, some signs themselves right, when they're starting to dip into a bit of a mental fatigue state uh, and, and so they can act accordingly I guess yeah, no, this is like a really good um, question and point to consider in terms of um, actual like definition of how a state of mental fatigue is determined. It's um, again, sort of determined by subjective behavioral and neurophysiological changes or and or each of them. And for athletes particularly, sometimes those um, neurophysiological changes might be hard to access. So um, functional um, fMRI, for example, or EEG, probably not able to them to access all the time so um and the same even we're starting to see more of it now but behavioral indicators that like response time or response accuracy on short cognitive tasks maybe are harder for athletes to get access to so um looking at the subjective experiences of them what would be some effective strategies that you found helpful for, for athletes yeah so this again is becoming much more i guess research because people have started to be like oh this thing is actually maybe a problem and also the great news is we can probably do something about it or we're not doing much about it so there's lots of scope to do something about it um yeah. i think um there's definitely like a lot of strategies that athletes can like self-identify and self-apply and then there's also potential um obviously for the staff to help identify and help um i guess apply these there's a the the evidence in terms of there's quite a few individual studies that look at different components. So um, we've got things basically like um, listening to like specific music frequencies. So like relaxing string um, music or vinyl beats is a like beating tone with a certain frequency that people can use. And if we if we use that sort of like AFL squad. As an example, uh, what would be some of your big rocks from a category point of view? Is it an age thing from a maturity point of view, a learning style, um, personality traits? Like, yeah, uh, what would be some of your key areas to, to focus on in terms of breaking up maybe into three groups? Yeah, I think um, I'm saying this all from kind of like a anecdotal and interpretation. Like we don't have hard evidence to say in, in this group, in athletes even. Um, but probably yeah, sure. like level of experience and exposure to the environment. So if the environment's really new to them, obviously there's going to be a lot of new stimuli um, and obviously also general fatigue that they're going to experience compared to if they've maybe been in that environment for a bit more time. So just think about an example that's never, like an athlete that's never done a media appearance before and it's media day, they're going to find that more cognitively 
fatiguing than someone who has, has done 10 of them. Or for mm. example, like someone who's quite introverted generally as a personality, they might find that more of an overwhelming or, or fatiguing experience, for example. 